Saint Matthias, the apostle. And let's see what it tells us here in the uh, in the Ordo that he died in the first century. Uh, doesn't have a specific year because we are not are not sure of that. However, we know that he was martyred, chosen to replace Judas. And we heard in the uh, the Acts of the Apostles the whole process of selection. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit on that. Qualified because he became he witnessed Jesus' ministry and resurrection, said to have suffered martyrdom either at Colchise, modern day Georgia, or in Jerusalem, mentioned in the Roman canon. So what we're saying you preach the prayer number one, you hear his name. Uh, Math- Matthias. Uh, we have here a beautiful account of the uh, uh, of how to select and uh, replace uh, the office. So take the office of Judas. But then also, uh, as we go through it, we see uh, the, how they look. First of all, how they want to be uh, in compliance with the sacred scriptures just as Jesus to, uh, picked up the twelve in order to to uh, uh, represent the twelve tribes of Israel, and then also is a sign of universal salvation to all peoples. So they want to be, from the very beginning after the ascension of the Lord, they wanted to be very uh, direct in fulfilling this part, even though small part, in a in uh, God's plan, and since the Lord had chosen twelve, they went back to that original uh, plan of fulfillment of those twelve. So the uh, the twelve is a very significant number. It means a lot more than just uh, than just a number. Uh, and so, but the, we also see here how the um, they go into prayer. How God's will is uh, recognized, and, and from then on, the Spirit comes upon him, and it, it fell upon Matthias. He was counted with eleven, and no longer than the eleven, you got the twelve again. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else can we uh, think of uh, here in the uh, in the sacred scriptures? Maybe we can. Uh, uh, it tells us. Uh, let's see. One of the. Tw- there was. Uh, I was surprised to hear see here that there were 120 people gathered for prayer and reflection in the upper room. Uh, they had the. It's pretty crowded. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but you notice 120. Again, the 12 plus mm-hmm. zero. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, all, all those things are intentional. Uh-huh. Uh, and so Peter had one criterion that is like Andrew, James, John, and himself. The new apostle be someone who had been a disciple from the very beginning. So he had to be a disciple. Se- secondly, uh, from his baptism by John until the ascension. So he had to be uh, really companion for the Lord. The reason for this was simple. The new apostle must would must become a witness to Jesus' resurrection. He must have followed Jesus before anyone knew him, stayed with him when he had made enemies, and believed in him when he spoke of the cross and of eating his body, teachings that had made others melt away. So so in, in their process of selection, they had to look very intently on all those aspects. And of course, then we know how, how the, the, it fell upon him. Um, what, what else can can we see of you know, uh, Saint Matthias to intercede for us? And then he gained, he had the privilege, he had the honor of being a martyr, and this is the highest highest grace that we could have as a disciple of the Lord. And so let us then continue and remember, uh, and let us remember also this uh, um, Monsignor who used to be David Malloy, Monsignor David Malloy who used to be our General Secretary for the United States Catholic Conference, but he has been chosen as the ninth bishop in the Diocese of Rockford, so just west of Chicago, Rockford. Mm -hmm. And so he's uh, being uh, ordained a bishop today at uh, at 2 o'clock. 
in, uh, in Rockford by Cardinal Francis George, uh, and then also uh, the co-consecrators, co uh, Bishop Thomas Doran, as well as uh, uh, Jerome Listecki, the Archbishop of Milwaukee. So and we'll remember them at this time in this Mass. So let us then ask for other...